Can we all just stop pretending that we know how planes fly? I mean, we've heard the sign so many times that we just have to go, ooh. But you and I both know that we have no idea what it all means. Well, for this video, I decided to take one for the team. I spent hours trying to understand the science behind what makes planes fly, just so I could break it down. Humans have been dreaming of flying for centuries, from the early experiments with kites to several glider inventions that never quite picked up. R.I.P. Otto Lilienthal. This man completed over 2,000 successful glides with his invention before he crashed and burned while testing a new design. Surprisingly, nobody was lining up to buy his inventions after that. It wasn't until the early 1900s that the Wright brothers figured out how to make powered, controlled flight a reality. Since then, the design and technology of planes have come a long way. But the basic principle that keep these massive machines afloat have stayed pretty much the same. Imagine four arrows. These arrows represent the forces that make flight possible. Lift, weight, thrust, and drag. Lift is the force that opposes gravity. Weight, due to gravity, is the force that pulls everything towards the Earth. Thrust is the force that pushes an object forward, and drag is air molecules resisting an object in motion otherwise known as air resistance. When all four forces are balanced, you get flight. You see, air is a medium quite similar to water. One of the major differences, however, is that air is not nearly as dense as water. But like water, airflow follows the shape of whatever it encounters. So when a plane moves through the air, the shape of its wings causes the air to flow around it. The air that flows over the wing ends up flowing downwards towards the tail of the wing. And that downward shove pushes the wing upwards. The faster the plane moves, the more lift is created, and the higher the plane can climb. And that's where thrust comes into play. Planes are designed with engines that provide the force that propels them forward. But is that enough to make planes fly? Well, there's one other thing air has in common with water, and that's resistance. Though the resistance in air is a lot less than the resistance in water, that's why it's harder to move in water, air resistance becomes more imposing the faster you move. So how do planes avoid this air resistance? The entire shape of a plane is designed to maximize lift and reduce drag. That's why planes have pointy noses. It pierces through the air and reduces the surface area for air molecules to push back on. When drag is reduced, it takes less energy to move forward. And to make it ridiculously simple, the plane's wings create lift, the engine provides thrust, the aerodynamic shape reduces drag, and the pilot has to carefully balance all of these forces to keep the plane flying smoothly. Honorable mentions. Of course, there are a few other interesting things worth mentioning about how planes work. For example, the fuselage is designed to be aerodynamic with a smooth streamlined shape that minimizes air resistance and turbulence. The tail helps to maintain the plane's stability and balance, making sure it stays on the right course. The shape of the wings is designed to be curved on top and flat on the bottom because it maximizes the lift that's generated. The engines are incredibly complex too, using a combination of powerful turbines and carefully designed airflow to generate the thrust needed for takeoff and flight. All of these factors come together to make giant metal birds that defy the laws of gravity. Personally, I find it absolutely mind-blowing that we've figured out how to do this. I mean, every time I see a plane taking off, I can't help but marvel at that sheer engineering genius that makes it possible. Seriously, the next time you're on a plane, just take a moment to appreciate all the history and hard work it took to make it possible. If you like watching my stuff, feel free to hit the subscribe button and check out more of my content. Thanks, and see you next time.